an uncharacteristically but understandably emotional Robbie Hummel after his alma mater makes it to the Final Four. And we are joined now by the Purdue legend, one of the best college basketball analysts in the business. Robbie, I know, listen, I, I know you well enough to know that is not typically you at the end of any game, whether it's a Purdue game or not. But the emotions did start to flow. You have a great relationship with Coach Painter, with this program. Take us back to that moment and what it was like for you and probably for anyone who's worn the black and gold. Well, first of all, it was a heck of a game. You know, Tennessee was really good, and Zach Eady and Purdue were just a little bit better. Uh, I, th I thought it was an iconic performance by Eady to go for 40 and 16, especially when Dalton Connect is doing what he was doing. And Lance Jones did a good job of making it tough on him at the end of the game. But, um, you know, I, I would have never thought that I would respond in that way. And, look, I, I've wanted Purdue to go to the Final Four forever, and certainly with our group and, and the way that my knee situation unfolded in late February, that kind of took that opportunity from us for a team that was going to be a one seed. Um, so th there's that kind of scar tissue that probably played a part into it. But I, I do blame Elliot Bloom, the Dobo, and Paul <laughs> Lusk, one of the assistants who recruited me for – they softened me up by coming over to the table – um after the game and, and i think we might have been in commercial break or maybe kevin coogler was just reading through the stats or, or doing what he does you know those play-by-play -play guys in radio have got to be beasts They're, they've got to be on it and, and really talk the majority of the time so those two guys came over and, and gave me a big hug and and we you know had a special moment with with those two guys and then when coach painter came over man he i, I was just i'm so happy for him because he deserves this He's one of the the good guys in college basketball. Um, he's done so much for me. He's done so much for his former players. He's one of the best X's and O's coaches in all of college basketball. And, you know, he was saying incredibly nice things about myself and, and Jawan Johnson and Etuan Moore and kind of the foundation uh, is what he he kind of said, you know, so that 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 was hard to hear. And then, you know, I just, I, I'm so proud of him and I'm so proud of the players because I know what they've been through and I know how hard it's been since the FDU game last season. And, and then also you take in the two, the two years prior with St. Peter's and North Texas and to see these guys really rally from that and stay the course and, and, and work hard and do it the right way and get over the hump against a really good Tennessee team. It, it was just a very emotional day. And, you know, I just I think it says a lot about how many former players have, whether it's on Twitter or whether they, they drove to the game and you see Ryan Smith in tears and you see Dakota Mathias, same thing. Everybody was so happy for this group and, and for coach and, and his staff because they deserve it. When the Midwestern cowboy can cry, anybody can cry. Uh, any truth <laughs> to the rumor that that was the first time that you've shed a tear since you were on a shortened Minnesota Timberwolves bench and asked to play the five against DeMarcus Cousins? <laughs> and, and bring the ball up and play point guard on offense. Yes, that that would make any man cry who paid for tickets, um, and, and including me, who has to, to do both of those things. All right, Robbie, let's get down to brass tacks as Purdue gets set to the Final Four in the matchup against NC State. We know about what Zach Eady has done, but on the NC State side, kind of the darling of this tournament has not just been the Cinderella team, but their big guy, DJ Burns. This is a fascinating matchup because Burns, like most other bigs, has never seen a player like Zach Eady in terms of his size, his skill set, but also his ability to stay on the floor for nearly 40 minutes, which obviously Burns right. doesn't have. When you look at that matchup, what kind of jumps out at you? Well, I'm intrigued by how Purdue guards it. You know, the, the kind of obvious answer, I think, is, well, Edie will just guard him. But for a lot of these teams, especially with fours that don't shoot the ball all that well, and I think DR, Muhammad Diara kind of fits that bill. He's an athlete. He's a rebounder. He shoots, I think, a decent percentage from three. I want to say it's, yeah, shoots 33% from three, but it's not on, on that high a volume. I could see Purdue starting Edie, Edie on Diara and then going with their four, Trey Kaufman, Wren, to start on Burns, and then Edie will just kind of play like a rover, and I just and he'll come over and double team, and they'll double the post and then rotate out, knowing that DR is not going to kill you from, from three. Um, that will be a choice that they're going to have to make because Burns, he, he wheels and deals. He, he's got a really good left-hand jump hook. He can really pass. So I, I could see them doing it. NC State has been an incredible story you know to win five games in five days at the ACC tournament and then you end up 
winning four games in the NCAAs. That, that, that says a lot about how much this team has come together. You know, you read up on them. They, they've stuck through some tough times. They, they've really done a nice job of, of handling some of the little things that they said they weren't doing earlier in the year. But on top of all that stuff, they're shooting the ball way better and they're defending way better. And, and when you do that, good things are going to happen. But Burns is really, he's been the, the story of the tournament for them. You know, he's, he looks like an NFL D lineman. And you know what? That might be in his future because of the way that his footwork is, his size, um, he, he's, he's definitely going to have a choice to make whenever that, that day comes that basketball ends for him. But man, he, he was phenomenal against Duke and NC state is really a great story. I, I think the biggest thing for me though, Rick is how, how does Purdue decide to guard him? And also how does NC state try to deal with Edie? I loved Matt Painter last week, Robbie. He was asked by someone about the criticism of Zach Eady that he's only good because he's big and, and paint went on a little bit of a rant, basically said anybody who says yeah. that is a moron. They're, they're idiotic. They should have to take a test to prove their basketball knowledge. When you watch Zach Eady, what jumps out to you? You take away the seven foot four. What else about him makes him the best player that we've seen in college basketball in a very long time? Well, it starts with the understanding that I've played with a lot of seven foot guys that suck. <laughs> so it starts right there where Honesty. just because you're tall, doesn't mean that you're productive. And I've played with a lot of seven footers that don't really like basketball that much either. Um, the first thing that jumps out for me with Edie has to be the conditioning, the stamina and the athleticism and agility, because the way he moves and some of the plays he makes, you think, man, for a person that is seven foot three or seven foot four, depending on where you look, th it's remarkable. I mean, I, I was watching film on Gonzaga because I, I hadn't seen him this year and they were playing Purdue and we had that game in the Sweet 16 and Gonzaga was playing a, a team early on in the season and I was doing like personnel stuff. So when you go through some of the clips, of the guys that don't play as much, you can get back to that that point in the year. I just like to see what how these guys score, or how they've been successful. And Gonzaga's playing this team and this other this opponent has a seven foot center. And a Gonzaga player drives the baseline. The seven footer leaves his man, and in the most slow fashion I've ever said, I sort of got it was like watching a glacier move. He comes over and stops the ball. The Gonzaga player flips it to a player in the middle of the floor. This guy turns and in like four seconds comes over to contest, jumps up. He's so late to it, lands, and then it takes him like two or three seconds to land, turn, and start going the other way. And I'm like, man, Edie does that in the most fluid way to contest shots all the time. And I was going to tweet it, but then I was like, man, don't, don't dog this poor player. <laughs> don't need to dog him to prove the point. But I just think the way he moves, rebounds outside of his area. He played 39 minutes against Tennessee. He's 7'4", 300 pounds. He played 39 minutes. He sat for 30 seconds. So he, from a cardio and a conditioning standpoint, it's off the charts. But then the skill, I mean, he went to his counter a good amount against Tennessee. They, they were started taking away his bread and butter move is his right jump hook. He wants to get to that left shoulder. He did a couple times where he went to that left hook. He did once where he went up and under. He's got post moves and he's got touch. He makes free throws. I think that, you know, a couple of years from now, it wouldn't surprise me to see him be able to knock down jumpers, whether that's from 15 feet or even extending that to three. I, I don't know. He's made a three this year. Um, he's only one for two, but his shot doesn't look bad. You know, he, he has skill and touch. And I'm telling you, Rick, I've seen so many guys that just aren't good that are that big. And he is really good. He is a really, really good player, generational player. He, he belongs. When you hear those stats and they're saying, man, it, the first thing since Shaq, first thing since Patrick Ewing, first thing since Ralph Sampson, Bill Walton, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, man, you don't just get in there because you're big. Those dudes are iconic players, and, and Edie's an iconic player as well. I 100% agree with you. Let's get you out of here on this. All year long, everybody that I talked to had the same answer to this question. I asked, after Zach Eady and Braden Smith, who's the third most important player on this Purdue team? For the entire year, Rayfell Davis, Bruce Weber, everybody else said it's Lance Jones. Without question, it's Lance yeah. Jones. Now, Lance has struggled a little bit offensively as of late. As we go into the Final Four, if I ask you that question today, is the answer still Lance Jones or is it someone else? I think it would ping pong between Lance Jones and Fletcher Lawyer. I thought Fletcher defensively was really good against Tennessee, just active off the basketball, where he needed to be, didn't get beat off the bounce too badly. 
Um, you know, there's so much has been talked about how it's hard for him to stay on the floor if he's not going to make shots. Well, Fletcher's rode this heater in March. Um, going into the Tennessee game, he was 15 of 22 from three in the month of March. So he he certainly upped his level, but I thought his defense really stood out against Tennessee. Um, and just his ability, he, he got to the rim a couple times. That Tennessee defense was so worried about Edie rolling that it opened up in the pick and roll. The guards were able to get downhill. Um, Lance is still a good a good option. I, I know that the, the jump shot maybe hasn't been there. Kugler killed the call. It gave me goosebumps, actually. Lance makes that three with like 2.30 to go. And Cougar's like, oh, the biggest shot of his career. Uh, it was it was big time. I, I had goosebumps for sure. Um, big time shot. But then also his defense on Connect. You know, they started Braden Smith. They thought maybe Lance needed to guard Zakai Ziegler because he initiated so much offense. And with the way Connect started the game, just kind of elevating over the top of Braden Smith. Not that he wasn't there. It's just Connect 6-7 and could shoot right over the top. Um, Connect was on a roll, and I, I thought Lance's defense there in the second half, even though Connect had 37 or 38 points, I think he took like 29 shots to get there. He, he took a bunch of shots. Um, so I thought his defense was big. Obviously, the three is is just a massive shot. Um, it probably is still Lance Jones, but if you said Fletcher Lawyer, I, I wouldn't hate the answer either. Purdue starts the Final Four Saturday against NC State. Tip-off just after 6 o'clock Eastern time. Of course, the game will be played out in the desert. And Robbie Hummel will be there as part of our Big Ten Network Final Four coverage. Robbie, appreciate the time. As always, my friend, safe travels. Look forward to hearing from you this weekend from Glendale. No problem. And I look forward to beating you on the golf course this spring. Not going to happen. <laughs>